Hello, thank you for joining me. It's day four of the um, IFA weekend in the northeast. Here I am with my larder, joined with a couple of Wartburgs, the Kubel Wagon Trabant, another Wartburg. And here is a railway line. This is the Tanfield Railway. I've never been to this railway before, but I've always wanted to go there. It's famous for passing the Causey Arch, the oldest railway arch in the world. So we're definitely going to go and walk up there, have a look at that later. The train is out at the moment, it's number 49, um, National Coal Board um, Hunslet Saddle Tank, so looking forward for a trip behind her, she's going to be a winning loco for me. There's also um, Ford Escort, I don't think that's with us, but it makes um, you know, a nice um, addition to the block, um, you know, a bit of Ford Classic as well. So this is East Hanfield Station here, so this is where we're going to catch the train. There's the carriage shed just there, so really what I've got to do now is um, wait for the train to arrive. I won't go through the station building because there's a bit of a queue and I'd have to put my face covering on now, but I don't need to wear the face covering on the platform, I've been told. So, this is East Tanfield Station, so it is the terminus of the line. The line carries on for three miles up that way to Sunnyside, we'll be going as far as Andrew's house, and then the line literally ends there, just by the pylon. I'll just show you... Um, along the platform a few things so um, just there we have the station building and there's some coal wagons so um, morning so back in the day when this was an industrial railway you'd have seen trains coal of coal wagons like this and um, I did get some footage of number 49 shunting these coal wagons this morning so I'll put that um, it, probably on a separate video of just number 49 in action so what we're going to do now, I'll just show you the ends of the, um, the platform. It's, it's a bit like, it reminds me of Foxfield Railway a bit, another colliery railway. Um, Foxfield Railway's down in Staffordshire where we have also had IFA meetings. If you have a look at the link on screen now, you can see a link to that video. And um, there's the carriage shed with no carriages in because they're out. Railway goes that way. I'm just going to wait for the train to arrive now and enjoy a trip on the Tanfield Railway. Oh, as you can see, the trains arrived. Just saw the loco run round. The funny thing is, there's more of that steam engine in existence probably than there is my larder because there's over 70 of those Huns at Cell Tanks. This uh, Zafrajet has just arrived as well, and another Wartburg. So the train is here. So we'll just have a quick look at the train. Here it is. It's quite um, a nice vehicle on the end. It's uh, a North Eastern Railway Saturday Director's Saturday. Saloon. So um, I won't take you inside, but I'll let you have a look through the window. It looks very nice inside. So that's on the back, and there's almost like a little veranda here. So then here's another one of the carriages. There's the guard's compartment. So it's a bit like, um, the carriages are a little bit like Thomas, Annie and Clarabelle's. You know, Thomas, Tank Engine Falls, Annie and Clarabelle. These carriages are a bit similar to that, I think. Um, you know, compartments, no corridors, no toilets, but very nice um, for, a, for a little journey we got today. Now if we come up here, we saw the local run around the train, but here she is. National Coal Board number 49, waiting to take us up to Andrew's house. Winning loco for me, not had this loco 
proper haulage before new track as well so I'm really happy with that one thing I'm just going to quickly show you about the loco is um, its number is 49 that's a national cold board number if you have a look here this is the works so it was built by Robert Stevenson and Hawthorns in 1943 and that's the works number so that's its official identity because um, there could be other locos carrying the number 49 chances are there probably are there'll only be one Robert Stephen Hawthorne's logo with that number so it's now time for me to board the train Andrew's house had a great bit of fresh up the hill behind NCB number 49. This is the current end of the line. It does carry on further towards Sunnyside. Well, the, line. the loco's blowing off impatiently. And um, when I say the current end of the line, I mean as far as passenger trains are going at the moment. So it does carry on further up towards um, Sunnyside. Also, just over there is Marley Hill End shed, where there's loads and loads of locos. So, what I'm going to do is we'll get back over the bridge. You get a complimentary tea or coffee for coming on the train, which I think is very nice of the railway. So, I've got to go and get my complimentary drink uh, before enjoying the ride back. Probably a bit less fresh, because it's all downhill. I saw Causey Arch from the train. plan is to walk up to Causey Arch when I've um, had the train ride. The has finished blown off, so I don't need to shout quite as much. So, I've got to go down there. There's a very... Um, good little footbridge here because the way it's shaped means it's very easy for anyone who wants to watch trains you can effectively um, see how it's shaped like this so I could stand here film the loco and sort of pan round so I'm going to go down onto the station now and get my coffee before enjoying the journey back this is called the Arch Station that's bells or something. I thought they'd be here on the platform. There you go, I'll leave the viewers guys everywhere. There's the arch. Just come up to Marley Hill signal box 
and uh, the railway has very kindly given us permission to have a look in the engine shed. So I just want to show you this. This is the main running line. Andrews House Station is the other side of the bridge. As I said when we were at Andrews House, the line continues our way to Sunnyside. They're having a bit of work on the station at the moment, so that's the reason why we didn't go that far. If you have a look here, you might just be able to see some sleepers. There was once a flat crossing here where another line crossed on the level. And um, it had, until fairly recently, been used as a head shunt. They're now just doing a bit of track relaying, so they've put temporarily a through running line, but eventually they will put the flat crossing back there just to create a longer head shunt. Here's the carriage shed, the yard is down there. If we have a look in the carriage shed, there's a few locomotives um, which we can go and see, so I'm grateful to see that because there's quite a few industrial locos probably would only see here. So I'm just going to stop and put my face covering on, and then we're going to go inside. Right, let's go in the shed. There we go. Here we have, well, the steam engine at start. We have a quite big carriage, much bigger than the ones out. It's a bogey carriage rather than a four or six wheeler. It looks like it's probably one that would have taken miners to work because it says NCB on it. Here we have one of the steam locomotives. This one's having some work done. One of the ones built by Robert Stephen Vorforms in Newcastle in 1948. We have an Andrew Barclay steam engine. This one has, um, there's a lot of these around, but they, most of them are four wheel ones. This is the longer six wheel ones. These were built in Kilmarnock in Scotland. As you can see, it's number 1015, built in 1904. And this loco is, how is the number number two? It's a bit more of a name number two but as I was saying there's so many other locos number two so if you want to the actual identity this this here this is as I said earlier the works plate have a look here I think our loco will come here tonight and on shed there's a carriage there having some being painted um, I'll take you down here so this is the loco we've just had a look at here we have um, another Hawthorne and Leslie steam locomotive go around the other side um, Get, there's more room and get a better view of the locos down there. There's one loco I'd always wanted to see. Read about it in magazines before. And the reason I particularly wanted to see this loco is just because I really like the name of the loco. So um, I'll show you that. This is the one we just saw. So another industrial cell tank. For those of you who don't know much about railways, the reason it's called a cell tank is if you look, this is the tank for the water and it sits on the boiler like a saddle. So hence saddle tank. Is this loco here though? I was particularly excited to see. Twizzle. I just think that's such a cool name. I really like the name Twizzle for a loco. And um, built by Robert Stephen Hall Forms in 1891. It's the oldest loco I've seen so far today. I haven't finished looking around yet so I might find something older. We come up here, get a good view of Twizzle. And here we are by a locomotive called Stagshaw. Now Stagshaw's had a rather interesting life. I'll tell you in a moment. Just let you while we're here see the cab. Stagshaw was built as an experimental form of steam loco that I believe used compressed steam. And there's a picture here. I'll show you what she looked like originally. Yes, that is the same locomotive. It's called Stagshaw. If you have a look around the front, you might just be able to see there's a stag on her funnel. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go outside, have a look around and see what else we can find. Here we are at Causey Arch Railway Station. That's more of a rail halt. Um, just a siding here with some coal wagons. Here's a train. The train's just passed through. And um, a very nice grass platform. It's supposed to be one of the nicest peaceful railway stations I've ever been to, but there's um, no facilities here. But there's something very, very unique, something you would not see anywhere else, called Causey Arch. The reason it's called Causey Arch is because just over there is the oldest railway arch in the world. Now, that obviously, because it's the oldest, it predates every other railway, so of course it predates this railway. There used to be a horse-drawn um, tramway for moving stone or minerals etc and this is its track bed and there's talk of recreating a section um, just so you can see what it would have been like and I'll be able to show you as we 
the, the station. This station has no road access. Um, it's a, a little walk to the nearest road. The car park's about a quarter of a mile away. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty remote railway station. But as I said, it, it's uh, unique. So that is the old tramway track bed. And this is the sort of wagons that would have been running nearly 300 years ago. So before steam trains were invented, steam locomotives were invented, a horse would have pulled this along and um, really it was only controlled by this brake and tracks were probably wooden, the wheels were certainly wooden but to get them over the gorge they built this, the Causey Arch. So we're going to walk over it and then we're going to find our way down into the gorge to walk under it. So as we come across to here you can see now as we come out to this little lookout area we're pretty high up above the treetops. So I'm going to walk over the arch, I'm going to go down those steps, take you under the arch. It's um, really, I like it up here. Up in the trees on a nice hot day and you can hear the relaxing sound of the river below. The last time I did a video a bit like this was um, in Manchester when I went to Healydale Nature Reserve and I walked over an old railway viaduct, but obviously newer than this one. Um, have a look at the link on screen now if you'd like to see that video. That reminded me a bit of this, but this, as I said, it is the oldest railway arch in the world. And it's only when you'll get underneath it, see how impressive it is. Because obviously we can appreciate the height up here, look down to the river below. But the sheer scale of the arch can only really be appreciated from down below. So I'm now following the old um, tramway. I'm not going to walk along it I've got um, I'm gonna go for another little walk and um, I'll see more Matt might see more of the trains on the Tanfield Railway I did really enjoy my trip this morning on the Tanfield Railway it's a very attractive industrial railway so I get to here as the junction of the path so the tramway would have carried on down there but I'm gonna go down here a lot of wild garlic growing over this plant here Looks like it's pretty past its sell by date, but that's wild garlic. You can pick it, and it's quite nice if you cook it into... Oh yeah, there's a very strong smell now of wild garlic. That's kind of because I'm surrounded by it. Really strong garlicky smell. Not so nice to be on its own, but if you pick it and you can cook it, put it in with salad, it can be quite nice. So there's the arch there. Still, we can't really see the arch itself because um, there's some trees in the way, so that's why we need to go down these steps. You can start to see... The sheer height of it as we go down to the river and then I've got to find my way back up the other side oh yeah now look at that there it is it's huge it's enormous that's um got to be one of the biggest circumferences of an arch I've ever seen it's pretty high I don't know about I wouldn't go as far as saying it's the highest arch I've ever seen but I don't know if I've seen an arch with such a large circumference it's just massive. <laughs> oh, that is really, really impressive. And to think how old it is. How, you know, it's been here for the last 300 years and when I mean, it was new, horses were clip clop clip clopping over it, pulling wagons right. So we're right underneath it now. A sign saying beware of the sudden drop. We're still not down quite at the river level. And here, a waterfall directly down there. And it's funny because it's the waterfall's really echoing. I can actually hear the sound of water coming from up there, but of course there is no water up there. It's not raining. It's like, um, you know, a similar thing to the whispering gallery at St Paul's. We can't try it. I'm, I reckon if I stood over there and whispered to someone standing there, I reckon we'd hear each other quite clearly. But it's... I hadn't realised that. When we stand underneath, you realise that the sound of the waterfall below echoes around. So I'm going to take you down to um, a less interesting and much, much more modern wooden bridge, as opposed to this very old stone bridge. But from that bridge, we should get a view behind us of um, the Causey Arch. And um, there's probably then some steps to take me back up the other side. So as we come down here, here we have, as I said, a newer, not so exciting bridge. Oh, look at it, it's enormous. So here we are, down in the burn, the bridge towering above us, the Causey Arch, the world's oldest arch. We was up there a moment ago, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to the Tanfield Railway for a great day. Very much appreciated being able to go and have a look in the shed. That was really nice. And um, as things get back to normal, they'll be able to run a service where you get on and off at each station. They'll start running to Sunnyside again. It's a great day out, so do come and visit the Tanfield Railway. And as for the IFA events, do look out for them. There will be more of them in the future, and I'll be making more videos like this with the IFA Club, other interesting railways, other historic sites, etc. So, hope you enjoyed this little series of the IFA event up in the northeast, the road run, the visit to Beamish, the Railway Museum at Darlington. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, there'll be a few more videos coming from the IFA event I've done on my own, a few little places I've been to with my larder, so do also look out for them. But from Causey Arch in County Durham, the oldest railway arch in the world, thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.